New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Brooklyn Burger the premium steakhouse burger and the official burger of the New York Mets be sure to visit Keith's Grill at City Field located on the field level behind section 132 and the promenade level behind home plate to enjoy Keith Hernandez's favorite Brooklyn Burger. Get your four screen jacket though uh, there tally ho you notice the mustard dripping I get you some napkins. <laughs> It's your fourth starting lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. Raphael for call having a resurgent season. Beltron and Holiday. Craig just back from the DL. This is the best offensive team, bar none, in the National League. They've had some pitching problems, but the Cardinals three games over 500 because of their offense. <laughs> Santana encouraging the young man who just threw out the first pitch. Said that was a strike. Well he's thrown a lot of strikes his last start that shut out nine inning sorry nine pitches and five of the nine innings he kept that pitch count down and had a complete game shutout. Met defense brought to you by Lexus and well Josh is back first start since the concussion it's been a while since he's been in the lineup and he's been missed he's been hitting really well for the Mets season his defense was much improved but the is still at shortstop Tejada still healing that quad down in Florida Baxter gets another start in left field he's earned that that's for sure. By the way if you're wondering which of the backup catchers the Mets chose to keep. They have kept Mike Nickius on the roster sent Rob Johnson back to Buffalo and interesting to see Josh using the hockey mask. He had said after he suffered the concussion on the hit from Ty Wigginton that he might go with this mask and indeed he has followed through. On well he's going to try to deflect some of those shots that come right back to foul tips. But remember uh, he injured his head because he thought he had to play on the baseball threw his mask off and that's why he's exposed to the elbow from Wigginton. Mike Matheny his first year as Cardinal manager 41 years old youngest manager in the majors and that's his bench coach Mike Aldretti I think uh, Mr. Matheny is hiding behind the post uh, Matheny was one of the guys This is Mark McGuire he can't hide uh, behind anything uh, Mike Matheny was one of the first catchers to wear that hockey style mask also by the way Mark's tried. <laughs> So for Carl will lead things off Rafael for Carl now 34 <laughs> years old and after a couple of injury pockmarked seasons he's having maybe his best start in the big leagues 391 on base percentage as he has fueled the front of this high potency Cardinal lineup the Cardinals lead the National League in batting average in home runs and in runs scored last time they had that trifecta for a full year was 1944. So Santana ready to go first pitch to for call and it's taken for ball one. And you can also add number one in on base percentage and slugging percentage. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, quite a juggernaut here. They got a lot of their players back. Two of them back. They've had their share of injuries and they still have some Lance Berkman obviously is a, a big loss for them. They've got Skip Schumacher on the disabled list right now. John Jay. Mm -hmm. Who was having center field. He was having a heck of a year. And Santana gets the outside corner with a fastball and it's one and two. For Carl hitting 367 as a right hand batter this year. They got him in the middle of last season and he really helped fuel that Cardinal run down the stretch to the World Series last season. Two and two to for call but he had missed a huge portion of the year because of a thumb injury he had an oblique issue as well but he's been fully healthy this year and really fueling this St. Louis offense down the right field side of foul ball. You know what's interesting about Terry Collins talking today he was mentioning that Santana after he came out pitched a complete game shutout. Terry was like boy Johan that's as good as I've seen you in a long time said not really I really have to start commanding my fastball a lot better. So the perfection of Santana still looking for ways to improve. And for call takes below the knees 90 miles an hour from Johan it's three and two. Santana did not walk a batter in his complete game shut out of the Padres. He struck out seven in that game allowed just four hits. He was completely dominant through just 96 pitches. And for call loops one into center. Late start in for Neuenheis, but he gets there for the first down of the night. And now, Carlos Beltran. The center fielder, number three, Carlos Beltran. 
Very interesting to contrast the mostly positive reaction to Beltron with the decidedly mixed reaction that mm. met the return of Jose Reyes when he came in with the Marlins. Beltron leading the National League in home runs with 15 and he takes a strike and I think so much of that has to do with the way they left you know one Correct. leaves as a free agent the other leaves via a trade and it in fans minds it makes a big difference. Yes no question. Fans minds he gave them lots of thrills and on upon leaving uh, left them with a pretty good pitcher who had a nice start last night Zach Wheeler pitcher who's being proclaimed by some independent sources is the best pitching prospect in the minor league Zach Wheeler. And the fastball up and away two and one to Beltron. Well I'm excited about all four of those pitching prospects down there in, in, in the minor leagues and we're talking about Familia Mejia coming back off the surgery. Broken back grounder foul. Lawn dart. And of course, Matt Harvey uh, to go along with Wheeler. Now, that's how you build from within. And I think those four guys down there are a lot of good, promising signs if they stay healthy and you keep and keep improving. You see what Beltron said to Tolly? Oh, that was my good bat. <laughs> Carlos has had some issues with his knee off and on this year. In fact, he sat out the Cardinals last game on Wednesday when the knee acted up a little bit. But it's well enough that he's playing center field tonight. First time he will do that in two years. And Santana with a great changeup strikes him out for the second out of the inning. Well, jams him running with a fastball and comes back with a change. Yeah, and the changeup, interestingly enough, totally with the inside target and just threw that down and in to Beltron, who to me is a high ball hitter from the right side. So two out of nobody on now the very dangerous Matt Holiday, who's been swinging the bat very well lately. You see that eight for 15 over his last four games. When this Cardinal lineup is fully available and healthy, it is. A lineup that has no soft spots in it. It's a little different right now down at the bottom of the batting order. But just getting through the first six in this Cardinal lineup is quite a task. And you see a lot of ones. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 30 more home runs than the Mets have hit this year. Holiday with 10 home runs on the season. Now in his fourth year with the Cardinals. Alan Craig fresh off the disabled list waiting on deck. Craig had a pulled his left hamstring. That coming after offseason knee surgery that cost him the first month of the season. 2 1 and Holiday fouls it off. Two balls two strikes. One thing I've noticed and you guys I didn't do the last Santana game is that his fastball is down for the most part here in that first inning that has been an issue for him this season location of his fastball has been up a, a good part of the year. Two two to holiday in the air to right and Duda moving to his left side retired. Santana spaces a couple of fly balls around a strike out of Beltron, and the Mets will come to bat against Wainwright. MLB at Home is presented by Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief. Works fast, and you won't stink. The official pain relief cream of Major League Baseball. Here's your Geico Mets starting lineup, and with Tolley back in, the Mets have eight, count of eight left handed bats tonight against 30 year old Adam Wainwright. First man up, Mike Baxter, and he takes a strike. Well, interesting. Wainwright started uh, Baxter with the first pitch cutter. You can see so far his starts uneven until the last few, and 70 and 40 on his career. Two Ooh. starts back, he threw a shutout against the Padres. Then his last outing allowed just one run in six innings against the Phillies. So Wainwright appears to be all the way back. You saw the velocity at 88 right there in that fastball. It says his velocity is down this year, but again, he was had the surgery. Last last year, you know his velocity is down, 
but they've been trying to work with him to use his fastball more. He felt like his velocity is down, so he's really just using his secondary pitches, but has gone to the fastball more the last couple of starts. And Baxter takes the fastball up and in. Wainwright, the year before his surgery, averaged about 91 on his fastball. He's a little below 90 this year. But really, with the cutter and the curveball, it's really not that yeah. huge an issue for him. And there's oh, that there curveball, devastating as always. Wainwright strikes out Baxter. Molino makes the toss to complete the putout, and that's the first out. Well, I tell you what, when you have a good curveball like that, you're going to win. And he has 70 wins and 40 losses yeah. in his major league career. Here's Kirk Newenheis with one out. An interesting note about Carpenter, of course, is on the disabled list this year, Chris, his battery mate. And Wainwright, last year, Carpenter was 0 and 4 in April. And Wainwright, of course, was on the disabled list, so there was no wins from the big two. This year, Wainwright starts out 0 and 3 in April, and there's no Chris Carpenter. But unlike last year, the Cardinals got off to a great start this season, even without any wins from their top two starters. May was a bit more of a problem for the Cardinals. They went just 13 and 16. Up and into New and Heights, two and one. I think a lot of the injuries kind of hampered their uh, their May. And like the Mets, their bullpen has been a big, big problem. Two and one to New and Heights with David Wright on deck. The wind really gusting out of the east now. Mm. Through that fastball by him, and it's two and two. He's got his fastball upstairs, RJ. Well, that's where you're going to go if you're pitching Kirk Newenheis. Upstairs with the fastball, bounce the breaking ball. He pounded Baxter upstairs, too. And the curveball mm. got him. So back to back strikeouts for Wainwright. Both put away curveballs, and there are two out and nobody on. And the Cardinal Coors Light defense. There's the three time Gold Glover out there. His first start. In two years, I guess, for Mr. Beltron. Uh, the first one this year for sure. Necessitated by first the injury to John Jay and most recently the injury to, injury to Skip Schumacher, who was really the other available center fielder for the Cardinals. So here's David Wright with two out and nobody on. David just two for his last 23, but both those hits have been RBI hits. Smacks went right at the oh. second baseman. Todd Green can't make the play initially, but recovers to throw out right and get Wainwright through the opening inning. So the Mets are out one, two, three. On to the second, no score. Excuse me, are, are you Johnny Bench? Yes. Would you mind signing this? Sure. And this, and this, and this, and this. Blue Emu, official partner of Major League Baseball. Johan Santana, after setting the Cardinals down 1 2 3 in the first, will face Alan Craig leading off in the second inning. Craig, as we mentioned, just back from the disabled list, had a hamstring injury, no rehab games for him. He'll just jump right back in. But Craig's one of those guys, you can wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he can probably <laughs> get three hits. Cardinals had a log jam at the first base and outfield positions when the year began, but because of injuries, the, the log jam has never really presented itself for Mike Matheny. Craig's had only 51 at bats. He's hitting 373. He had offseason knee surgery that cost him all of April. Just coming into his own at age 27 out of Cal. There's Mike Matheny, youngest manager in the majors right now. With no prior experience, either as a big league coach or as a minor league manager or as anything else for that matter. Uh, both he and Robin Ventura are doing just fine. Well, Matheny was always a manager in the making when he was a player. This one's driven to center field by Craig right off the DL, a long drive run down by Newenheis for the first down. You know, I think when I uh, think of Mike Matheny, the daunting task for him is not the team. It's the team that's coming off a world championship. So he's got the players. Daunting task always is replacing kind of a iconic manager in in Tony La Russa. And he said when I talked to Mike, he said I'm definitely going to do some of the same things that Tony did, especially in spring training. But really, my mentor was Felipe Alou when I was in San Francisco. Here's last year's postseason hero, David Freeze. MVP of both the LCS and the World Series. 
two of the most memorable hits in World Series history came off Freeze's bat in that incredible game six win over the Rangers. Good slider by Santana and it's 0 and 2. Freeze got off to a great start this year as well, but he's really cooled down lately. And you see what he did last October. He's got a sore right wrist and he hasn't been put on the DL. It's been kind of a day to day thing. So he's got a little bit of discomfort with the. If he got a bad wrist, it's a little difficult to hit. Your wrists are so important to hitting. And if you know it as a pitcher, you got to jam him because Freeze is a guy who has tremendous power to center and right field. Santana throwing a lot of sliders in the early going tonight. Threw fewer sliders in his last start against the Padres. Didn't really need it against that team. Yadier Molina waiting on deck. And Freeze lays off the changeup. And check it out down first. And Lance Barksdale agrees. No swing. Three and two to Freeze, the hometown St. Louisan. Who had his career derailed by injury after injury before finally blossoming and then bursting onto the national scene last year. 3 2, and the changeup misses for ball four. So the Cardinals have the first base runner for either side, a one out walk to freeze. Well, there's a lot different with the Cardinals this year. Not only Tony La Russa retiring, but also Dave Duncan, his longtime pitching coach, and you might want to throw. Albert Pujols into that mix. He was rather iconic in St. Louis as well. So much has changed with the Cardinals, but this guy remains the same. And having a, um, an amazing offensive year, had a big year last year, but has turned it up a notch. And is raging hot right now, hitting 500 over his last seven games, and he takes outside for ball one. Molina, now fourth in the National League in batting, hitting 333. It's been a banner year for. Offensive catchers in the National League, but this guy isn't an offensive catcher. Yeah. He's a gold glove catcher. A platinum glove. Mm -hmm. Eight home runs on the year so far for Molina. Yeah, and Santana didn't get that call. 2 0. Oh. There are your batting leaders in the National League right now and two catchers amongst the top five. Wow. Don't see that very often. It's interesting that Molina with eight home runs last year was a career high of only 14. So he is really off to a terrific start. Now Santana behind him 2 and 0 and Yadier takes it down 3 and 0. I, I read something today that I couldn't believe. I was looking at some of Molina's numbers. Of course he hit the deciding home run in uh -huh. game seven against the Mets in 06. Do you know that Yadier's never had a regular season home run against the Mets? 135 at bats. Oh, but he had a big one. If you're, <laughs> if you're a Met fan, that's a, that's enough. <laughs> it's a trade off. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Back to back walks issued by Santana. That's been a rarity this year. You know, for Johan, it's going to have to kind of flip the book here facing this disciplined Cardinal team. Yep. It's not like facing the Padres, where they're swinging as soon as the ball's halfway to the plate. Matt Adams, the big first baseman, comes up. There's your umpiring team. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, has the plate tonight. Lance Barksdale, Field and Colberth, Adrian Johnson rounding out the crew. Matt Adams, who Provides an imposing presence at the plate, just 23 years old. They called him up about 10 days ago with all the injuries they've had. And he's taken over at first base and he takes a strike. He's the only left handed bat in the Cardinal lineup tonight. Cardinals, after Pujols left, gave the first base job to Lance Berkman, and he's been hurt. Matt Carpenter did a nice job for a while, he's been hurt. And now Adams inherits that job. Big. Big, big shift. Well, they say this guy is looks a little pudgy and a little soft, but he's got a very, very short swing. And he's been called up and really hit. You can tell he's a big, strong kid. Yeah, I'm not going to make any comments. He <laughs> looked like you twitched your head off. Twelfth game, Adams has started for the Cardinals. Santana's ahead of him, 0 and 2, with two men on. Freeze is at second, Molina at first. They both walked. Santana hasn't walked more than three batters in a game all year. So the back to back walks, a bit of a surprise. 
Matt Adams from Slippery Rock University. Hmm. What a rarity it is for a player from Slippery Rock to get to the big leagues. The last major leaguer from Slippery Rock University was Bob Shockey, who pitched for the Yankees in the 19 teens and 20s. Oh man. His last major league game was 1927. So from 1927 till 2012, no slippery rock products in the big leagues, but now Matt Adams representing. And Santana gets him with a changeup. Second strikeout for Johan in the second out of the inning. Interesting, the older players uh, worked out two walks. For the more veteran players here, the younger player Keith goes down. Well, Santana is always going to have his way with young hitters. So we're looking for a fastball. So two out and two on. Now Tyler Green, the second baseman, Green, former number one draft pick of the Cardinals from Georgia Tech, hitting just 227 on the year. And he takes the change up down for ball one. Freeze and Molina the base runners with two out. And Santana for the third time in this inning is behind in the count two and oh. So Johan throwing a lot of pitches here in the second as Ronnie noted earlier his last five innings against San Diego in that shutout each of those five innings he threw only nine pitches. Mm -hmm. That's that's hard. To yeah. Do. And Green takes a strike two and one. Johan is back pitching with an extra day of rest in this start he had four straight starts in which he went on regular rest because the Mets played 20 days without a day off. And having trouble getting the Cardinals to bite at that changeup. Now he's behind three and one. Well, I don't think you can pitch around Green. You're going to have to go after him. Wainwright's a pretty good athlete on the on deck circle. Let's see what Green gets here on three and one with two out and two on. And he got another changeup. Three and two. Amazing, you're supposed to be throwing a fastball in this situation, just raises that change up just a bit for a strike. That's the one thing I found out when I came up to the big leagues when I was 20 years old. That it was no more longer getting the 3 1 fastball every time you get it That's right. So now the runners, Freeze and Molina, will be off three and two and two out. And Green takes strike three call fastball on the inside corner. So Santana after back to back walks puts up back to back strikeouts. Lucas Duda to lead off the bottom of the second no score. Here's your Mazda upcoming schedule. You can listen to every Mets game on Sports Radio 66 WFAN. Four o'clock start tomorrow afternoon will be on Picks 11. ESPN takes the reins Sunday night. Then we're back with you on SNY Monday afternoon for the finale of this homestand. Then the Mets go to D.C., the Bronx, and St. Petersburg. Tough schedule coming up right in the middle of it. Last we saw Lucas Duda, he was homering in his final two at bats on Wednesday night against the Phillies his second career multiple home run game and his first two ever big league home runs against left handed pitching. Lucas now has seven for the year to lead the team and he floats that one toward the middle of the diamond for oh. call on the run to grab it for the out. He came out of nowhere well, for Carl's healthy this year. He's yeah. had he's had health issues the last several well, three four years. Toughest part of that play was getting Field and Colbert out of the way. Passing route, linebacker goes away from the football. There you go. That's where the umpire stands in football, too. That's right, right? Right? right behind the middle linebacker. It bowled over by the pulling guard. Here's Daniel Murphy riding a five game hitting streak, back over 300 on the year, and he rips one foul. 
Murph now 193 at bats deep in his season and still looking for his first home run. And a slow ground ball for Green to handle. And there are two out. So two up and two quickly disposed of by Adam Wainwright. He of the outstanding curveball. Well what he does is that he has that finger off the ball the middle finger on but it's the thumb that is cupped underneath the baseball that really makes the difference. He holds it with the seams now guys if you're home trying to work on your curveball with the seams use that middle finger keeps this finger off but even more importantly the horseshoe you cup your thumb like that so you can pull down with the middle finger and jam it with your thumb pull and push best curveball you can ever have. Thank gosh not too many guys know that. <laughs> Mike Davis takes a strike. <laughs> well, clearly, everybody does know that if you're a pitcher. So why is his better than most? Well, I, he has extremely uh, big hands. Uh, if you watch, uh, so you know, he really can grip the baseball kind of loosely in his fingers. It doesn't uh, compromise his hand to be on it. So it's a natural thing. And then the other thing is that he's just so darn strong. He's 6'5", 235, 240. Um, just a very strong individual that can really get as much revolutions as you can. That's the key. How many times can you get that ball turning right. as quickly as you can? Those are the great curveballs. Precisely. And there's the curve to Ike Davis for a strike. One and two. Notice how Ike's getting curveballs. Everybody else, he's pounded pretty much fastballs in, establishing fastball. And there's the grip again, RJ. He, and he has a, a kind of a shortest stride for a big guy so that gets his hand on top quickly and gets that downward movement and Gary every great curveballer I ever faced Bly Levin Don Sutton Carlton they had the extraordinary spin on the ball you could see it as a hitter at the place sometimes it even whistled it was uh, that that quick 2 2 to Ike and he fouls it off Doc Gooden in that category too. Doc was different Doc just manipulated the ball with his fingers in such a way that he just pulled down on it and it would start at 6 4 6 5 and it would just go straight down from the mound. He had a very unusual curveball. Doc held it four seams only person I've ever met mm. to hold a curveball four seams. 2 2 to Davis. And that curveball misses down, and I able to wait it out to a three and two count. This this is a good at bat. I mean, you know, curveballs that we've seen as soon as they're halfway to the plate, Ike swings at. Now got gets himself in a better hitting count. Well, at this point, the way he's been pitched this year, he's got to be saying to himself, "This is the adjustment I need to make." Three two hook. Oh, and the geez. emergency hack keeps him alive. Ouch. Well, that's because watch, he's expended already. He's out in front, nothing left but arms. And that's just, oh boy. That's one you want to edit out of the highlight films. Cut her in right here. And he walked him. And the Mets have their first base runner of the night. So Wainwright, who likes Santana, walks very few, 2.6 per nine innings. He issues his first free pass. And here's Josh Tolley for his first at bat. Josh out since being waylaid by Ty Wigginton's wayward shoulder in Philadelphia on May the 7th. So he's missed better than three weeks. Had an at bat as a DH on Wednesday, a game of catch last night with Chris Young, and now right back on a big league field. And by the way, quite a job by Chris Young in that rehab right. start with Tolley yesterday. Six shutout innings, what, a couple of hits he gave up? That's it? At 10:30 in the morning, start. It's it's good for old guys, and he's got kids, so he's used to waking up early. <laughs> Takes a lot of coffee to get the hitters on time. Nope. And totally lashes one foul, and it's one and one. So I, I asked Josh uh, when I saw him today. I said, uh, "What was it like uh, being down there and having an extended spring?" He said. It was the worst. Sometimes the umpires wouldn't show up. The games wouldn't start on time. It was just, please, he said, send me somewhere where there's an organized team. <laughs> Josh, who grew up a Cardinal fan in Southern Illinois, playing against his boyhood team in his return to the lineup tonight. And the curveball bounced foul, one and two. Well, Wayne Light, Wayne, Wayne Wright, excuse me, looks very sharp. And Ronnie, you mentioned it earlier. He is establishing on this 
this 90, what, 5% left hand hitting lineup, he is establishing the fastball in. Yeah. First time through the order. Rain out in Washington tonight. Hmm. That's the rain that's on the way here. Here's the one two and the fastball in there for a call strike three. So totally down looking Wainwright has his third strikeout. Santana and Wainwright matching zeros early. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Pepsi Max. Go to MLB.com slash Pepsi Max to vote for your favorite legends for the chance to play ball with some of baseball's greats. By Parts Authority, Auto Parts Superstores, where the answer is always yes. And by Kia Motors. Third inning, Adam Wainwright leads off against Johan Santana. Wainwright just one for 22 at the plate this year, but a lifetime 211 hitter with five home runs. He can swing the bat. Yeah, 16 doubles, too, so he's got some pop. Well, you know, he's rehabbing his hitting, too, coming <laughs> back from nice Tommy shot. John surgery. Well, it doesn't help to face Santana, I'll tell you that. Johan has already struck out three. And Wainwright hits oh. a two hopper to right. Ball comes up for David, and he makes the play one away. By the way, David made some news before the game today. Talking with Ed Coleman on the pregame show on WFA, and he said definitively he does not want to talk about a contract extension with the Mets during the season. Right. There's been a lot of conversation by ownership, by people speculating about David and his contract status, and he put that to rest for the moment, said during the season, no negotiations. Eddie Coleman making like Mike Wallace. Very good. <laughs> that's, that's what he should do. Ed's down there, he's an investigative reporter. <laughs> And everybody's friend. <laughs> That's right. One out and nobody on. Here's Rafael Fercal who fly to center his first time. He bluffs the button, takes the change up for a strike. But I think that's the right thing for David to say. Yes. Even if it's not true. Yeah, right. Because then everybody, everybody stops asking him questions. Yeah. I mean, how many questions has he already had to answer since Ryan Zimmerman signed that contract extension during spring training? Here it goes this way. I am not talking about the contract this year. Well, are you? Agent's going to talk about it. I am not talking about the contract right. this year. Look, That's your answer. Focus on the field. Yeah. And then if stuff happens behind the scenes and they announce the contract, well, that's the way it goes. Duda moves over to the edge of the warning track to grab the fly ball by for a call for the second out. You got to you got to pay the 10 percent for something, don't you? That's exactly right. So two out and nobody on. Now Carlos Beltran bats for the second time. Santana got him swinging and a change up his first time up. Carlos is in the top 10 in virtually every important career category for the Mets. Home runs, RBIs, he's sixth in both of that categories, and right about the same place in on base percentage and slugging percentage. Throw in the gold glove work, and you know, he is, by just about any measure, one of the greatest players the Mets have ever had. Right. He's by far the best center fielder that they've ever had. You see some of the all time ranks. Very nice graphic, guys. Very nice. Uh, he might be, to me, anyways, uh, one of the best athletes that's ever wore a Mets uniform. Line to short and snagged by Quintanilla. So Santana has a 1 2 3 inning. He threw nine pitches, nine strikes. No score in the third. Get insider info and debate as the Devils continue their push in the Stanley Cup Finals. Plus, Recaps and previews of all the Mets and Yankees matchups on Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouth, all part of the New York Sports Local weekdays starting at 5, only on SNY. Omar Quintanilla leads off the home third inning against Adam Wainwright. Quintanilla's third game as a Met, went 3 for 4 in his first game on Tuesday, 0 for 4 on Wednesday. And now back for another go round. Ruben Tejada was here today running in the outfield before the game. Easy ground for Adams to handle one away. The plan is for uh, Ruben to run the bases tomorrow, and if that goes well, he should be ready to start a rehab stint. Meanwhile, Jason Bay may be even closer to coming back. Jason's going to DH this weekend down in St. Lucie. Maybe play a game or two in the outfield early next week if that goes well and could be back with the Mets by the middle of next week or by the latest the uh, the Yankees series next weekend. 
could spend a whole half inning on the health report every day, couldn't we? Well, the good news is that things appear to be looking up for the Mets as far as getting some of their injured players back with Toldy back today and those other two on the horizon. Mets also made a couple of bullpen moves, bringing in young Elvin Ramirez to join the bullpen tonight. As Santana goes down on the curveball, and Molina will make the toss for the second out. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Is that the old curveball machine right there? That's old Jugsy. For the two wheels. Never seen the wheel where you could actually see it spinning. That's outstanding. That machine cost me 26 stitches below my eye. Came, I was in college, they had a Jugsy machine, and sometimes it comes out like a knuckleball. Yes. And I had used to wear glasses then, right into the glasses, into the cheekbone, 26 stitches mm. later. And the next time you uh, stepped in against the, uh, the Jugs gun? Bring it on. <laughs> That's right. Right? Tough That's guy. That's right. <laughs> oh, and two to Mike Baxter. Every now and again, you're right, because I've hit my share off those off those uh, machines. Yeah. He always hated it because there's no motion. <laughs> there's no motion in a pitching machine. It's like someone spitting sunflower seeds. Even out the here. old Iron Mike that had the, what, the, the would come like a windmill yeah. at you. You you had no motion and it was just I hated those things. The only one I liked was the old fashioned the old two tires the curveball machine. Yep. Another slow grounder for Tyler Green. He throws out Baxter, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Adam Wainwright. Two pitchers on top of their game. Two guys who missed old last year. They're looking good. Let's look at our AT&T trivia question for today. His next stolen base, Carlos Beltran, will become the eighth member of the 300 300 club. How many of the other seven can you name? Nice. That's a good one. Matt Holiday leads off for the Cardinals in the fourth inning. Holiday fly to right his first time up. Are there two guys with the same last name? I, I think I think so. There's at least one active. Yes. And now Santana falls behind Holiday 2 and 0. Alan Craig and David Freeze to follow. Wind has been whipping tonight. Weather has cooled down. Some storms may arrive later this evening. You getting uh, royalties off that shirt? Oh, oh. <laughs> My I youngest think. daughter has that shirt. She does? Yeah, Mary. She likes to get even with me when she wears that shirt. <laughs> she does. <laughs> And it doesn't say one. doesn't say you're her, her house boy. <laughs> Here's the 3 0 and holiday takes a strike. Santana had an easy inning in the third one two three just nine pitches after a rough second in which he walked a pair and had to. Rig a lot of trouble. He's got a pretty pretty big swing. Uh, Matt Holiday, but good hand-eye coordination and pretty good timing usually. Yeah, he's he's had good good career. Big very leg good, kick, very good career. And just missed ball four. Santana walks his third of the night. So the leadoff man on for the first time for the Cardinals with Alan Craig coming up. Craig flied to pretty deep center field his first time up. The biggest problem the Cardinals have had with Craig over the years is figuring out where to play him. Yeah. He's a third baseman in college at Cal, and well, the same time they were trying Schumacher at second base, they tried to move him over there, but he's a little uh, a big body, does they say, for that position. He profiles more as a corner guy anyway. Yeah. And if you could get his kind of offense at second base, that would be spectacular. Mm -hmm. But. Doesn't happen often that way. Very crouched at the waist. Craig, you're wearing Kurt Flood's number, I believe. 
I don't think you can play him in center. No. <laughs> Not like Kurt anyway. <laughs> Popped up. Murphy with the angle coming over but Ike will take it. And that's the first down. The wind is really playing tricks with the ball right now. Have an odd weather pattern for June the first. June gloom right here. Did you get did you get the San Francisco phenomenon. That's right. June swoon. Uh, June swoon in San Francisco June gloom in, in Los Angeles. Uh. Did you guys catch the HBO special um, on Kurt Flood. It was amazing. Um, I think I it was did. HBO. It was, it was a documentary. It was, it was on terrific. Kurt and his life. David Free is it to the center field, playable for New and Heiss. And that's the second out. Well, every modern Major League Baseball player should pay homage yeah, right. to Kurt Flood because yes. if it weren't for Kurt and his great courage at challenging the powers that be in the reserve clause back in the 60s, none of the riches that have come to players over the last 40 years would have happened. Well, he was traded to Philadelphia Phillies, who were the, the, the doormats. Of the National League for so long, and he by the Cardinals, and he refused to go and challenge the the the, uh, the system. And the two guys, the two pitchers that held out, Andy Foster Smith and Dave McNally, they held out, and that also was a big took a lot of guts. Well, what they did is they they played basically without a contract because at that time teams had. The option on your contract for every following season. So they said, okay, we'll play out our option. Then we should become free agents after that right. year. And the arbitrator ruled in their favor. That's and right. that set the whole free agent system in motion. But but, but without flood, there's no Messer Smith and McNally. Correct. But three very courageous men. And um, just think about the attitude of the owners towards those three three guys. I mean, talk about getting blackballed. Uh, those guys were. I, I just took a lot of guts. Well, it basically ended Flood's career. Oh. And had a tremendous impact on his life as well. Yes. Molina walked his first time up. But I don't know. You know, I don't. I've never been in a union meeting. You guys yeah. have. But yeah. I would think that every Major League Baseball Players Association union meeting should begin. With the tribute to Kurt Flood. Right. <laughs> You're right. Well, I was a Cardinal player rep, and as a Cardinal player rep, I was, and Lou was still playing. Lou always said to go in there and 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 get some kind of help for Kurt because he was really destitute, and he wouldn't accept any. Marvin, I remember Marvin Miller telling me this will end the inning right here. This pop up, Marvin Miller, real quickly just said. He won't accept mm -hmm. anything from us. Mm -hmm. We've offered. He won't take it. He was a hero, though, without question. Pitcher's battle continues. No score in the fourth. Not a house boy. Just remember. <laughs> there are your city probable starters for the remainder of this series. R.A. Dickey, weather permitting, goes tomorrow against <laughs> Lance Lynn. We'll talk more about that in a moment. John Neese, Sunday night against Jake Westbrook. And then Monday afternoon, Jeremy Hefner maybe gets another start for the Mets. Kirk Neuenheis leads off in the home fourth and breaks his bat on his first swing. So let's check in with Kevin Burkhardt, who's sponsored tonight by Cholula hot sauce Kevin nice to have a sponsor walking around the stadium Garrett. <laughs> a lot to carry you know as we watch Kirk new and I hit here and and, and uh, Ronnie you touched on this on on uh, Wednesday night you know I think Wally Backman's done a great job with Buffalo Bisons and all these guys that have come up here ready to play and ready uh, knowing what to expect and I think that's been a big factor here in some of the success handing off to Terry Collins I talked to a lot of the guys that have played for Wally not one of them um, had anything but I loved playing for him to say Newman Heights was one of those guys said absolutely loved him just loved him he said you know he remembers what it's like to play the game he's so positive constant positive reinforcement that being said he wants you to give it your all you have to give it your all he said you know we were playing the Braves I got to second base first thing Dan Ugla said to me hey how'd you like playing for Wally Backman Ugla played for him in the White Sox system loved him as well I talked to Omar Cantonia what did he say he said he brings out the best in you but he's a character I, Wally a character <laughs> well, I think we kind of know that too but he's doing a great job guys back to you for call has it go off the second base bag and that cost him a chance to get new a bouncer over the pitcher to the base off the bag away from the shortstop 
Well, and that's a hole in one. You can see he made the decision too late there. He saw it was going to hit the bag and not there quick enough. And that, my friends, is the first base hit for either side of this game. Right in the clown's mouth. <laughs> so, new and high support to start the fourth. Now, David Wright. Grounded out to second base on the first pitch he saw tonight. First pitch fastball away. Let's see what uh, Wainwright starts him off with. In the air to deep right center. Back goes Beltron to the warning track at the wall. It's over his head. Neuenheis racing for third. Beltron recovers. Tim Tuffle will hold Neuenheis. It's a double for David Wright. Beltron playing center field for the first time in two years. Couldn't run it down. Well, he misplayed this ball. He overran it. He's trying to re readjust. That should have been in his hip pocket. How I would never see that with Carlos. Well, I think we talked about it before. The swirling winds are definitely a problem here at City Field tonight, and they got Beltron there. It's an unusual wind pattern tonight, no question about it. But you know those are 35 year old legs and not the healthiest of legs out there playing center field. He's pressed into service because of the injuries the Cardinals have had. So a chance for the Mets second and third nobody out for Duda and he hits one in the air to right that should get a run home as Craig moves back tagging at third new and ice tagging at second is right the wind carries it new and ice comes home right heads to third one nothing New York. Sacrifice fly for Lucas Duda, his 27th run batted in. Jumping on the first pitch. More and more we're seeing that with Lucas. Yes. I like it. Don't let him throw that fastball. A little cutter that left out over the plate. He just got under that. That could have been a three run shot. Just missed it. Well, but that wind's really playing a, a havoc with the baseball when it goes in the air. Now the infield will come in with right at third and one out. Daniel Murphy, the batter. And the curveball smacked toward the gap in right center field. Craig running over. He won't get there. Wright comes in to score. Murphy takes the turn. He's heading for third. And Murphy slides in with his first triple of the year. 2 0 New York. Well, a little reverse here. That's another hanger. Curveball right here. Mets jumping on first pitches. Well, we talked about Craig and his defense. He's just lumbering out there. No chance to get to that ball. And Murph immediately thinking three. Well, nice job by Murph. A little slide into third. This inning, single, double, triple by the Mets. This is not the triples ballpark that it used to be. For Murphy it's his 10th career triple and so now the infield has to stay in for the Cardinals already with a 2 nothing lead Mets looking for more the infield in with Ike Davis at the plate so Wainwright who was just about spotless over the first three innings finding trouble in the fourth it all began with that bouncing ball off the second base bag by Neuenheis for an infield hit. But the next three pitches double by Wright, sack fly by Duda, triple by Murphy. Davis walked his first time up. And Ike fouls it back. And Wainwright needing a strikeout gets ahead 0 2. Six out of 13, a little less productive than you'd like getting that runner in from third with less than two out. Josh Tolley on deck. Wainwright has struck out four tonight. And a good block by Molina. Nobody does it better. He just surrounds himself around the baseball and he just leans his body and head over the ball hovering over it to make sure that it bounces straight into the dirt in front of him. 
as well. Textbook. Four straight gold gloves. And probably will win it as long as he plays. <laughs> now it's one and two to Davis. And Wayne Wright bounces another curve. Confident that Molina will smother it. And he's just doing that on purpose yeah. because Ike's been fishing. And don't be surprised if he comes upstairs and up and in, Ronnie, you're, out of the strike zone now. You're right. Two curveballs in the dirt, gets the 2 2, cut her in to try to get surprise Ike inside. Change up. No, Ooh, back to the ball. cutter. Yeah. And then he can throw a 3 2 curve if Ike takes it. But Davis hits it sharply, surrounded by Green, and holding it third is Murphy. Two out. Interesting that Murph was not contact. Stuck there. Especially with that ball hit in a spot where Green had to lunge for it. It's a quick decision to make. And it's not far enough away, really. If it was just for like five feet to his left, to Green's left. Any chance you read that as a line drive off the bat as a third base runner? Uh, no, it was no a ground ball all the way. All right. It's just a, it's a matter of how far is it to the left. Of the second baseman is too close. So now the infield back with two out and totally skips out of the way. Josh went down looking his first time up and his first at bat coming off the disabled list. Josh was having a fine offensive season when he went down. Now trying to pick up where he left off. And the curve ball bounced slowly, ranging very wide as Adams and gets it over to Wainwright to end the inning but the Mets cash a pair against Wainwright in the second new and ice foul started with a lucky hit right with a double due to a sack fly and then Daniel Murphy with his first triple of the season makes it two nothing New York. MLB at home is presented by Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief works fast and you won't stink the official pain relief cream of Major League Baseball. Fifth inning, Johan Santana now staked to a 2 0 lead. Matt Adams will lead off for the Cardinals in the top of the fifth. Santana's walked three, struck out three. Adams struck out his first time up, and the Mets put the full shift on against him. There it is, the triangle. Tim Tuffle in charge of the positioning of the defense. There's Timmy. Hmm. And Santana, who has had some at bats tonight in which he's fallen behind 2 0, 3 0, finds himself in that situation again. Hmm. And there's ball four. And so for the second straight inning, Santana's walked the leadoff hitter. Tyler Green coming up. Let's check in with Kevin. You look at Josh Tolley back from that concussion, Gary, and you guys touched on it earlier. He's got that hockey style helmet on now, and it's not to honor the Devils or the Rangers. It's it's a little bit more protection. I asked him about it before the game. He said it's heavier, a little bit better protection, he feels. Also protection on the side of the head. Uh, and the good news, well, I, at least it was a good test. Yesterday, catching that game against Chris Young, took a foul ball right off his forehead and the mask, said he was totally fine. So it was he felt it was nice to kind of get that test out of the way, guys. It's important to remember with Tolley that the concussion that he suffered three weeks ago was not his first. In fact, it was at least his third and maybe his fourth since his pro baseball career began. A lot of these, uh, well, maybe not as many as there used to be, but a lot of these athletes, you see the umpire with his mask, um, pretty ornate. A lot of these guys, uh, you know, played high school football and. You know those those things will tend to happen and especially in those sports and you know we're now reaching an era where every concussion is monitored closely but for these guys who've been playing sports for the last 10 15 years earlier in their lives maybe they suffered a concussion and nobody mentioned it nobody nobody knew. Here's the 0 2 to green and it's up and away. I'll never forget the first one I ever got was my freshman year in high school. Um, I was playing uh, varsity football Keith and I was too little to play the sport to tell you the truth and 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 had one and only my dad knew he said listen son I'm going to stay with you we're staying up all night you cannot go to bed you know he knew that that when he had a concussion that you couldn't close your eyes and sleep you had to stay up. 
I got my first concussion in Pop Warner football. <laughs> did the uh, without without pads. We did the the day before the warm up. Yeah. Going through all the plays with just without pads. Yeah. A goofy kid from Oklahoma. Defensive end. He was real aggressive and. Popped I was you. just supposed to block him. He came in and we broke my nose with his forehead. I had bad sinus the rest of my life because of that kid. <laughs> Forget his name. Well, that's because you had the leather helmet on. You didn't have the <laughs> <laughs> Green goes down looking for the second time. I can't believe you remember he's from Oklahoma. Oh, we were I... talking about Chris Young, and he pitched for Buffalo yesterday. Six scoreless innings at the game that started at 1030 in the morning. And there seems to be some uh, discussion about maybe Chris coming up and pitching for the Mets before he gets another rehab start. In fact, there are a lot of pitching plans right now for the Mets that are kind of up in the air the next few days. But one thing is for certain is that the Mets will have Chris Young up and pitching in their rotation sometime soon and will keep their fingers crossed for good health because really the way Chris's career has gone that's been the only thing that's ever held him back. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Terry Collins asked today is uh, is Chris Young in the discussions for uh, that next uh, spot in the rotation. He said yes he is. Yeah, we go any further than that. Yeah I mean Jeremy Hefner right now is slated to pitch Monday which is a day earlier than Young's turn would be since he pitched yesterday his turn would be Tuesday. But the Mets have some other things going on right now one of which is we, we mentioned that there's rain coming later tonight it might last into tomorrow and Ari Dickey is scheduled to pitch tomorrow and Terry Collins said before the game look we do not want Ari to pitch in the rain we did that in Atlanta it was his worst game of the year he can't pitch in the rain. So they might make a decision tomorrow if they're going to be playing in any kind of wet weather to scratch Dickey put Hefner in that spot move Dickey back to Sunday and then you could roll into Young as early as Tuesday. That's right. And it would be kind of a, uh, a Hefner to go you know hopefully five innings maybe a Hefner uh, Jack Egbert kind of game. And you also have Miguel Batista in that mix. He's down on rehab and is eligible to come off the disabled list Monday as Wainwright goes down swinging for the second out of the inning. Five strikeouts now for Santana to go with his four walks. Well there are the numbers on Chris Young and you know when he's been healthy when he's been able to pitch in the major leagues you know Texas San Diego Mets he yeah. has been a vastly successful pitcher. And that was certainly the case in his four starts with the Mets last year before he went down with a similar shoulder injury to the one that Santana has returned from. You would have two guys in the rotation coming back uh, with that injury. That's to have one in the organization is a lot. Coincidentally enough as Rafael Fercal takes ball one Mark Pryor who is probably the uh, the other most famous pitcher who suffered that same capsule surgery and has not been able to come back from it was just promoted to Triple A by the Red Sox, mm. trying to complete his comeback. And um, in fact, Young was working out with Mark Pryor this past winter, and uh, they were encouraging each other through their return from capsule surgery. Well, I think the um, what happens is when he gets some of these injuries to the real uh, of fine players that play this game it seems like the science gets a little better on how to rehab these players you know it happens to Joe Schmo and double a well you know maybe doesn't get as much time or opportunity but uh, certainly when it happens to guys like Santana you start to uh, he becomes the the test piece well, for so, what you do so far he's passed the test yes, with rather flying colors and he gets for call with the change up for the second strike. That's a high change up here. So the speed beats him. Yep. And completely out in front. So now it's one and two to Fercal. Runner goes and it's looped in the air to shallow left. Baxter coming on to make the grab. Side retired. Santana four walks five strikeouts no hits allowed through five two nothing New York. Excuse me. Are, are you Johnny Bench. Yes. Would you mind signing this? Sure. And this. And this. And this. And this. Blue Emu, official partner of Major League Baseball. 
Today before the game SNY and City presented the largely latest recipient of the SNY Play Bowl Award the Garfield Little League with a five thousand dollar check to help them pay for proper equipment to keep their kids safe. Now it's your turn. Help your youth baseball or softball league with a five thousand dollar grant. Apply for the SNY Play Bowl Award presented by City today at SNY.tv slash play ball. Omar Quintanilla leads off in the home fifth inning. Quintanilla grounded out to first his first trip and Wainwright throws that cutter in on him. One and one. Quintanilla then sent Tana and Baxter for the Mets in the home fifth as a little rain begins to fall. Mm. And Quintanilla gets all tied in a knot on another cutter and it's one and two. Mets got both their runs in the fourth. Duda and Murphy with the RBIs. This is an official game because we've played four and a half with the home team leading, which may become an issue as the rain arrives on the scene. And that curveball misses. Two balls, two strikes to Quintanilla. It can't be a rain delay tonight. Jeremy Hefner didn't start. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Two two for Wainwright and another mm. curve ball. This one gets Quintanilla and Molina for the third time tonight has to make the toss down to first. Five strikeouts for Wainwright. One out and nobody on. Time for the inside pitch on Adam Wainwright. Brought to you by the Xerox Business of Baseball. Xerox ready for real business. And the reason I say he's become a mini carpenter, being around Carp has only helped his progress as being a gamer and a leader out there in the mound. We've seen already first curveball in the National League up there with the entire uh, major leagues. An emotional start 10 days ago when he did throw that shutout against the San Diego Padres. I found it real interesting that after the start he was interviewed and he almost broke down and I think uh, people out there you tend to forget how difficult it is to rehab your arm after an injury like he had and all the hard work that goes into it and the tough start he got off to and to have that start kind of is was the a payment for all the those services rendered for all that hard work uh, during that offseason. Yeah, you know, the reason why we tend to forget is because comebacks from Tommy John surgery have become so routine now. So many pitchers have it and most of them not only bounce back but many of them seem to be better than ever. A year and a half two years after surgery. You know what goes to the mind of a pitcher when you get injured for the first time and I know when I had my arm operated on the first time is your baseball mortality flashes in front of your eyes and you know boy I might not be able to play again. Two two Santana fouls it off. You know, am I going to be the same pitcher I was before. If you're an everyday player am I going to have the same speed. Well it's a great tribute to these two guys facing each other right now that they've not only come back from a season on the sidelines and surgery but have come back as good as ever. Rolled out to shortstop and for Kyle throws out Santana. Now neither one throws as hard as they did in their best days but for this quality of pitcher and we've seen this time and yeah. time again that may not matter as much as it might for a run of the mill pitcher. They just uh, you know they're on a different uh, different wavelength as far as uh, pitching acumen. They'll get it done somehow some way. And I think when you lose a little velocity and you've got the great secondary pitch like Wainwright has. It makes you a better pitcher more intelligent you want to locate your fastball better where before when you threw three four mile an hour faster you can get away with one. Baxter slugs one out to center and right there is Beltron waiting for it. So Wainwright has himself a one two three inning and we are through five Santana back to the mound for the sixth to face Beltron two nothing Mets. Well one swing could win it for New York. One of many memorable moments for Carlos Beltran as a Met. Walk off home run against the Cardinals. 
That was the day that uh, Carlos Delgado hit his 400th home run, a grand slam, wow. and Pujols hit a couple of home runs in that game, and the Mets came from way back to win. Beltran 0 for 2 tonight. He struck out and hit a soft liner to short, and he pulls that one just foul. Just foul. Oh, nice play by the ball boy down there. Good hands. Came very close to being the Cardinals' first hit off Santana tonight. Oh, boy, I tell you what. Adrian Johnson, the third base umpire. And if it didn't kick up chalk, it came awfully close. Nice play. Beltron, Holiday, and Craig for the Cardinals in the top of the sixth. And it's pulled the third one hop to David Wright. And he throws out Beltron one away. Boy, it looked fair. It had a big hook on it. Look at that. Oh, that's fair. That fair. fair. Fair ball. Oh, boy. And it did kick up chalk. Wow. Get an eye chart. Well, <laughs> if things progress as they're going right now, that could be an enormous call oh, historically. Man. Yep. Rain falling. Cardinals, the best offensive team in the National League. Any way you want to measure it, and Santana has held them hitless so far. Well, Jose Akendo has just given it to third base umpire, giving it to him. Oh, they are really chin to chin now. Why not? He blew the call. It's all right for Jose to get on him. And Mike Matheny's just wandered out of the dugout, walking from one end to the other just to be there in case Okendo needs help. Okendo's way back on purpose. He's just giving it to him. <laughs> well. Special games always seem to have little gifts. Look at this. There, John. Here we enjoy. go. Here we go. Okendo is going to get himself run from this game if he hasn't already. Well, it was clearly the wrong call. Adrian Johnson just missed it. It was clearly, as we saw it on a replay, a fair ball off the bat of Beltron. He's just telling him, I just looked at it, Adrian. It was fair. Adrian's got to calm Don't down. Don't tell me. All you have to do is look at the spot where the ball hit. There's no chalk there anymore. You, you might not be able to see it. And listen, Matheny, once he saw Jose going at it with Adrian Johnson, that was enough for him. You never see a Kendall argue with anyone. I guess umpire, who's, who's doing the arguing? The umpire or the manager? Well, I don't know what he's arguing, but he's wrong. He should just take it. And that's it. Well, he has not ejected Okenda from the game, apparently. Here's the, the shot again. Clearly, it's a fair ball. He hit the chalk. All it has to do is hit any piece of the chalk, and it's a fair ball. Here's your Coors Light freeze cam. So the Mets get a break there, and Santana gets a huge break. Well, a young umpire trying to stand his ground, but on, uh, on unsure footing. It's a lot of arguing for not throwing either gentleman out of the game as Santana throws a good change up to Holiday one and one. So and that gives you an idea that he kind of knows that he might have yeah. missed the call. And then it's a, it's a positive thing. At least the, everyone's still in the ball game. One one to Holiday and the change up blown away. Two and one. Holiday has flied to right and walked. Santana has walked four. It's the first time since June of 2010 that he's walked four in a game. So his pitch count is higher than he would like. And it certainly makes you start to speculate if Santana keeps his no hit bid intact. There seems to be no chance given what we've heard from Terry Collins about his limitations pitch count wise that he'd be allowed to finish this game. Collins when asked today 110 is the number. He said that could go to 112, 115, but there's no way they're going to stretch beyond that. And he didn't say just now, he said at any point this season. Yes, yes. Because of Santana's status as a pitcher coming back from major shoulder surgery. And Terry's experience of talking with other managers who've dealt with pitchers coming off surgeries. Now that's a move in the right direction, is it not? I like to hear 110, 115. Swing and a miss, and Holiday out on the changeup. Six strikeouts now for Santana. Right down the pipe. He swung right under it. He wasn't fooled. He's on it. He just swung under it. So two out and nobody on. Now Alan Craig will come to bat. Craig is fly deep to center and popped to first. 0 for 2. And he runs one inside. 1 and 0. 
I think the pitch count is up also Gary and Keith because Cedarstrom Gary Cedarstrom the home plate umpire has not given any inside pitch to Santana called inside pitch 90th pitch of the night here and it's low and away to Craig 2 and 0. Oh. David Freeze would be next. Santana coming off a four hit shutout against the Padres. He's got 14 consecutive scoreless innings under his belt. And that changeup is called a strike, two and one. Alan Craig first game back from the disabled list. And now Santana behind three and one. Well, for a guy who is not allowed to hit, he has been behind in the count quite a bit. Postponed in Washington, rain delay in Philly, playing here in the rain as the storm moves up the East Coast. 3 1 from Santana and a pop up. Davis coming over into foul ground. What's the wind going to do with it? He oh. circles and grabs it. The wind is hellacious right now. Santana even better. Kirk Neuenheis leads off the home sixth inning for New York and he drills one into right center for a base hit. So Neuenheis has his second hit of the night. Had an infield hit in the fourth that sparked a Mets rally. Mets will try and do the same here in the sixth. First we'll check in with the studio Chris Carlin for a Fuji film game break. All right, Chris, here's David Wright, who doubled over the head of Beltron in center field in the fourth inning to fuel the Mets' two run inning, which represents the only two runs in this game. I mentioned earlier, the Mets have eight left handed bats in the lineup tonight, and our friend Bob Waterman of Elias points out only fitting, the only right handed bat in the lineup is a guy named Wright. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Does Bob ever take a night off? No. No. Smothered by Molina, a ball and a strike. I don't think Bob's missed a Mets game in, I don't know, 30 years. So when we're on the road, does he go over to Yankee Stadium? No, I think he watches us on TV. Yeah, oh. he's like he's like a Elias's beautiful mind. He I'm just like, is crunching numbers I'm liking, all day long. I'm liking Bob more and more. I <laughs> More information I hear about him. <laughs> you know, he's in the food room. You can say hi. <laughs> he's kind of like you, Keith. You know, when when you're not working, you're following every of course pitch on television. Lucas Duda on deck. David's double was his 18th of the year, second in the National League, behind Joey Votto. And really a ball that Carlos Beltran misplayed. And a lot of swirling winds here that Beltran overran that fly ball really and went over his head in right center. And the reason we always say that is because very rarely does anything go over his head because Carlos has always traditionally played a deep center field. Slider that. Didn't really break, and it's three and one now to right. Check it two and two. Wainwright working to a much lower pitch count tonight than Santana. And that curveball didn't break much either. Three and two. I think you said noon nice here, big time, without a doubt. Well, Wright has not been striking out at nearly the rate that he has in the past as Santana is Being left alone in the dugout. Absolutely. Molina, the only X factor in this play. There goes New and Heist. David rips one down the left field line, but foul. Adrian Johnson got that call. Perfect. <laughs>
Meanwhile, as Santana waits in the dugout, worth pointing out that while he threw 96 pitches in nine innings in his last start, he's thrown 93 in six innings mm. tonight. Well, he's got the four walks in this ball game. That's the only base runners he's allowed. Neuenheis runs again and Wright fouls it off. Well, the six inning. No hit bid by Santana matches the longest for a Met this year. John Neese in his first start of the season against the Braves went six. It's starting to get very lonely over there where Santana's sitting. He's just rounding into form. <laughs> Neuenheis went on the first two, three, two pitches. He will again. And time asked for. If you can, you don't want to release that pitch if you're a pitcher. If you can, sometimes you can't. Because you don't want to tip your hand what you were throwing. Can you hurt yourself by not releasing uh, it? If you're going to hurt yourself, let it go. But it's an equal mind game with a hitter, too, yeah, though. Take yeah. it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to throw it again? <laughs> Eighth pitch of the at bat, New and Heist runs, and it's outside for ball four, and the Mets have two men on. So a terrific turn at bat for Wright. Second walk given up by Wainwright. Two men on for Lucas Duda. We'll check in with Kevin. Duda swung at the first pitch at the sack fly before, swung at the first pitch against Lee the other night, hit a home run off him. A little different. He's never really done that. I talked to Dave Hudgens about it. He said, you know, I've always kind of reminded him the goal is to get a good ball to hit, first pitch or not. And, you know, for him, I think the other night against Lee, it helped that he saw him a couple times, took a couple of uh, fastballs inside, first that couple of at bats, and then jumped on that one for the home run. Some guys can't swing at a first pitch. I remember Scott Hatterberg in Oakland could never do it, but I like it. I, I like him being aggressive on that first one. See if he does it here. Made him the subject of a movie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Curveball is down for Wainwright for ball one. Due to sack fly, drove in the Mets' first run tonight. His 27th run batted in. Daniel Murphy, who drove in the second run, is on deck. Well, Murph pull on the infield. I mean, dude, excuse me. Oh, ties him up, and he stopped the swing. Two and zero. Oh. Well, Duda hit those two home runs against lefties on Wednesday. This Cardinal pitching staff, though, is almost all right-handed. Their only lefty starter, Jaime Garcia, was scratched because of some elbow, elbow tenderness. So the Mets are facing four righty starters in this series, and they only have one lefty reliever. There's a strike. Two and one. Mark Zepchinski, although they did call up a second lefty today, a rookie named Sam Freeman, and whether Mike Matheny feels comfortable throwing him into the fray remains to be seen. So it should be a more comfortable series from that standpoint for the Mets left hand hitters. High fly ball, deep right field, back goes Craig to the warning track at the wall. It's out of here. Lucas Duda with a three run homer. His third home run of the last two games. And it's five to nothing, New York. They come in waves. Well, maybe he's heating up. And notice how quick Ronnie, that ball was in, not in enough, just missed enough. And that shows a little bat, bat to me, it shows more bat speed from Lucas. And let's they want it inside. It's belt high, another cutter, it just didn't get there. And I also think on a night when I believe it's very difficult to hit this ball out of the ballpark, shows you how much power Lucas has. Eight home runs on the year for Lucas. Three of them, three, three of them in the span of five plate appearances. Over at 30 RBI now too. One and one to Murphy who tripled in a run his last time up. We were just mentioning the rookie Sam Freeman and there he is up in the Cardinal bullpen with the Cardinals now behind five nothing. And Murphy it's a tapper off the mound Wainwright and he throws him out one away. Well Wainwright 
in his first five starts of the year allowed seven home runs. He had not allowed any home runs in his last five starts before Duda took him deep. And so Wainwright who had been just about impeccable his last two times out against the Padres and the Phillies gets touched for five runs so far tonight. He was just a little careful with David. He was trying to make sure that he kept this at a two run game and it cost him against Duda. Well his cutter has been his uh, nemesis tonight. He's missed with the cutter with this, per this what eight left hand hitters in this lineup. If you recall. Uh, to lead the inning off new hit a cutter that didn't get in enough and pretty much ditto with with Duda and a three run bomb and Murph hit a hanger. So three mistakes he got hurt by it badly. Well when the Mets throw this lineup on the field against a right hand pitcher it's going to provide anybody with difficulties. Even a guy the quality of a Wainwright. was the high fastball and it's two and one to Davis. Ike has walked and grounded out 0 for 1. Makes you wonder when Jason Bay comes back, will Terry still be tempted to run this almost all left hand hitted line hitting lineup out there? Jason Bay, when he comes back, he will be in the lineup. All the time. Well, then there's some major decisions. Who's going to be sent down? Who's going to be lopped off the roster? Well, you have 40 man roster issues, too. Chris Young is not on the 40 man roster. Pedro Beata, who could be here by the end of the weekend, is not on the 40 man roster. So there are a lot of issues for the front office to consider. Curveball struck him out. Six strikeouts for Wainwright, two out in the inning. Well, out in front again, stepping in the bucket more than I've noticed in a while. Ike, I know he's always stepped in the bucket, but that's something he may need to address. So two out and nobody on. Now here's Tolley. Josh has taken a call third strike and grounded to first in his return from the disabled list, and he takes a curveball strike. Well, Santana now nicely fortified with a five run lead. As Tolley lifts one to shallow center and Beltran eases over. Puts it away to end the inning, but the Mets tack on three on Duda's home run. Santana goes back to the mound. Been a big night for Johan Santana so far. Through six innings, he's held the Cardinals without a hit, but he's walked four while striking out six, so he's thrown 93 pitches as he faces David Freeze to start the seventh. Santana now four to five with a five nothing lead. Freeze has walked and fly to center 0 for 1. It'll be Freeze, Molina, and Adams for the Cardinals. High fastball from Santana, and it's 0 and 2. Freeze just doesn't look like the same hitter he was early this season when he got off to a tremendous start. Injuries to your hands, huh, Keith? Hands and wrists. Looks like he's off balance almost. Keith, I mean, uh, Ronnie, if you are in this situation, if you're Santana, how do you approach these at bats? You know that if you want this thing to go on, you've got to get quick outs. I, I, he's not thinking that way. I, I, I know that he knows that he hasn't given up a hit yet. He'll pop up on the right side. Should be easy for Ike Davis. One out. But he has consistently showed every single start he's made for these Mets. He's all about the W. So that's what he is protecting. He is taking each batter, trying to get them out. And Terry Collins, I don't envy him <laughs> right now talking to Dan Worthen. It's the only time you have a 5 nothing lead, and neither manager or coach has a smile on their face. I mean, right now at 97 pitches through six and a third, given the constraints that have been put on Johan, you'd have to think there's just no chance he can finish this game. You know, if I'm manager, I may have to get on the on the, on the phone and the dugout and call Sandy Alderson and say, 
What do you want to do here? Uh, protect me now. <laughs> Sandy, I need some help here. Back up. Molina 0 for 1 in a walk and he fouls it off 1 and 1. The one thing about Terry as we've seen since he's been here not afraid to make the really tough decision right. to no. protect his players. And well, this, this inning is not the issue for Santana it's what would follow in the eighth and ninth. Hundredth pitch on the way and Molina takes low and in 2 and 1. Six and a third innings the farthest any Met has taken a no hitter since Ari Dickey against the Phillies last September. Fourth time in his career he's gone this far. And that changeup is down three and one. Matt Adams, the first baseman, the only left hand hitter in the lineup for the Cardinals tonight, waiting on deck. Three one coming to Molina. And a fly ball deep left field. Back goes Baxter onto the track. He makes the catch. What a play. And Baxter may be hurt. But he hangs on to the baseball. The umpire's coming out there, and he just now singles out because Baxter has not yet shown the ball, but he is shaken up after hitting the fence. I think he hit his shoulder pretty hard here, obviously. He crashes into this ball. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, head and shoulder, perhaps. But in any event, Baxter makes a wonderful catch oh. to keep the no-hit bid intact. What a play. S selling out for this play is Baxter. Well, he knew what was at stake, and this is the way he's played oh, anyway. God, that's a catch. I thought there was no chance he was going to make this play. See how that speed and you're right he hit that shoulder awfully hard. You know, he did. stumbled here he wasn't able to turn to like get the flat of his back the full part of his back against the wall and just went up against his left shoulder. Mm -hmm. Santana's reaction. Shades of Rusty Staub back in 73. Terry Collins asking for a replacement. Andres Torres is already running on the field. But right now the concern is for Mike Baxter. Mm -hmm. Ray Ramirez the trainer with him there. Seated in front of the fence. Up on his feet, but clearly that left arm is a big concern. Let's see where his wrist and the glove come into play here against the wall. I don't see it. No. As he lay on the warning track, ball in his glove. The third base umpire Adrian Johnson ran about 200 feet out there to make sure that he had secured it. But you certainly have to be concerned about Mike Baxter and what kind of injury he may have sustained here in making a wonderful play to preserve Johan Santana's no hit bid through six and two thirds. So Baxter the hometown kid who has played so remarkably well for the Mets and getting a big ovation. That's an awful long walk. Ooh. Well, they say well, uh, we'll just very nicely done by Met fans there. If in the course of a no hitter what do they say there's always one or two three plays there's always uh, some gifts from the baseball gods it seems. Well we've already seen two that great play and the the bad call on the Beltron ball that should have been scored a base hit. Torres comes into play center new and highest moves to left and now Matt Adams takes inside for ball one. So now what of Santana having to wait these few minutes during the delay. Adams has struck out and walked tonight. And he takes it low 2 and 0. I, I will say that everyone on that field and in the dugout is a little shaken up now including the pitcher. Santana behind 2 and 0 on Adams. And the rookie takes it low 3 and 0. And that pitch count inexorably begins to become untenable for Santana up to 105 and you have to think this might be his last inning the bullpen now is starting to work. 
There's a strike three and one. Bobby Parnell first man up. Now the three one and Adams hits a tapper down to first. Davis makes the play. Santana has a no hit bid intact through seven. Now the question is will he be able to continue beyond this. Mike Baxter helps Santana get through the seventh with a tremendous play at the cost of his shoulder. Five nothing New York. Home seventh inning Omar Quintanilla leads off for the Mets. The intrigue right now is in the empty on deck circle. Johan Santana went down the tunnel when the inning ended with 107 pitches under his belt and a no hitter intact through seven and there's nobody in the on deck circle Santana's place in the lineup. Here we go. Not the no. bad boy. Terry Collins has they're going looking for Santana. He's going to keep him in. He's looked down the aisle toward the tunnel a couple of times and here comes Johan. He's yep. putting on his helmet. I agree. Well Bobby Parnell was up in the bullpen he has now sat down Santana's got his helmet on so at 107 pitches with seven no hit innings under his belt Santana's going to get a shot for at least one more. And you just heard the reaction <laughs> to his entry to the on deck circle. How many games Gary. Tonight is number eight thousand and twenty. Ricky Bonus all alone. Over the mound. Oh, for Kong. Are you Another kidding? one he couldn't feel. This one didn't hit the bag, but it was just beyond his reach. And Quintanilla has an infield hit, reminiscent of Neuenheis's hit back in the fourth. It didn't hit the bag, but he was affected by that. He was. <laughs> and it should be a rule of an error. I don't know what they're going to do. And a big applause for Santana. It is a hit for Quintanilla. And Santana will go up there to bunt. Not quite the thunderous ovation I thought he was going to get as he came to bat here. That was a little odd. Six outs away from potentially the first no hitter in Mets history, and he got a smattering of applause as he came to bat. And he gets the bunt down nicely, and Molina makes the play on him. Two three on the sacrifice, moving Kintanilla to second. It's a better hand for the bunt. <laughs> Where are we in Montreal. This is um, can't sit in your seat kind of baseball isn't it. One would suspect. So Santana will resume his lonely seat at the end of the bench. Andres Torres will come up for the first time took over for the injured Mike Baxter in the last half inning. We'll get a report on Baxter as soon as we can. And Andres takes the curveball from Wainwright outside for ball one. Some people get jaded when something's happened to them 8,020 times in a row. They're just waiting for something <laughs> bad to happen. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Torres rips one down the right field line, but foul. Let's answer our AT&T trivia question. We asked who are the seven members of the 300 homer 300 stolen base club. We opined that there might be two guys with the same last name on that list. And Wainwright struggling with his curveball now I guess both bonzes oh. are there. Andre Dawson we forgot Steve Finley we forgot Reggie, Reggie Sanders. Sanders never would have gotten that. Mays and A-Rod the other two. Mm -hmm. And Carlos Beltran one stolen base away from that club. Now Wainwright behind on Torres three and one. Now Wainwright up to 95 pitches now and he certainly has appeared as though he is losing some steam. They've got the lefty Freeman up in the bullpen waiting to make his big league debut. And Torres takes it wide for ball four. So the Mets have two men on. And here comes Mike Matheny 
out of the Cardinal dugout with the left hand hitter Neuenheis coming up. Sunday it's a one on one with Tim Burdock find out about the phone call that changed his life forever plus see all the highlights from the long awaited return of Banner Day on Mets Weekly presented by W.B. Mason Sunday at six only on SNY. Pitching change for the Cardinals. Sam Freeman in to make his big league debut. Wainwright exits. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Five nothing Mets. We'll be right back. Well, Adam Wainwright out of the game after six and a third innings. And the 24 year old left hander Sam Freeman out of the University of Kansas will make his major league debut. 32nd round pick from that University of Kansas. The left hander has averaged just about a strikeout per inning in his minor league career. Kirk Neuenheis is two for three tonight. And he's pushed his batting average up over 300 for the year. First and second and one out. Mets looking to end with their 5 0 lead. And a fastball in for a strike. Nothing and one. Wainwright went six and a third, six hits, five runs so far, three walks, six strikeouts, a home run by Duda that crushed his night. Gintania and Torres aboard. And Newenheis takes that fastball wide, one and one. Sam Freeman began the year in double A, made six appearances at Triple A Memphis before being called up to give the Cardinals a second lefty in their bullpen. They had a second lefty earlier this year, J.C. Romero, but they let him go. He was just ineffective. Cardinals have been making lots of changes in their bullpen. Got closed games for them last year. Fernando Salas mm. is in the minor leagues now. Remember Lance Lynn moved into the rotation. He was a big part of that uh, bullpen late in the postseason. He went high late on the fastball, two and two. Well, the, the Cardinals in May had a bullpen ERA of 5.44, which is uh, right about where the Mets yeah. bullpen has been for the full season. Another new member of the Cardinal bullpen Michael Plato is up in the Cardinal pen. And now it's three and two to new Heist with David right on deck. No Freeman hasn't gotten his breaking ball over yet. Bobby Parnell continues to hang out near the bullpen mound. He was throwing in the last inning behind Santana. Johan is batted in this inning. There's ball four and the bases are loaded for right. So Sam Freeman walks the first man he faces in the major leagues. Celebrate Mets great and saves leader John Franco when he's inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame at City Field this Sunday night at 730 with a special on field pregame ceremony. Then it's the Mets Cardinals in the series finale at 805. Get your tickets at Mets.com. So a base is loaded opportunity for David Wright. David tonight has doubled and walked. He scored two runs. He's now just two runs behind Jose Reyes for the all time Met career record. Already this year David has moved into second place on the Mets hits list. Have to be careful if you're new and heist at first. Molina loves to throw the ball around the infield trying to catch a napping. And now oh. Freeman behind on right two and oh. Telling all those fielders two and oh duck. Mets have hit one grand slam this year. It came from an unlikely candidate, Mike Nickius. David takes his grand slam rip and misses two and one. Boy, big rip. I think David was going for a granny here. Big uppercut going for the bomb. He has four grand slams in his career. The last one came six years ago. And now he's got a three and one advantage. Mike Matheny leaving the young lefty in to face David Wright, who chews up lefties about as well as anybody in the game. Now on three and one, it's low ball four, and that forces in a run. Quintanilla comes in to score. David Wright with his 31st run batted in. Six to nothing, New York. Three straight walks issued by Cardinal Pitching. 
including the first two that Freeman's faced in the major. An inauspicious start. Well, Duda, fresh off a three-run homer, is last at bat, and fresh off two home runs against lefties on Wednesday, will bat here against the lefty with the bases loaded. Duda with a four RBI night matching his career high. And he takes that breaking ball for a strike. Duda with three home runs in his last five plate appearances. This young man's got a good arm, just uh, that heart's pumping. Yep. Here you are, big league debut in New York. The other guy's pitching a no hitter. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? That's the other guy. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch to gear on right here. Two sliders in a row. Look for some cheese out over the plate. Hey Ronnie, if you're in Santana's spot, yeah. does it bother you that this inning might last a, a while? Yeah, uh, you know, I've only been in the uh, taken through the seventh inning maybe three or four times in my career, and it wasn't until after I left uh, left New York. And uh, I would say yes. I mean, you, you're itching to get back out there. Um, you know, you feel like you have enough runs right now, but you know. The hitters are taught to add on. Two and two now to Duda. So Freeman finally able to throw a couple of breaking balls for strikes in this at bat. He's taken a lot off of it. He was throwing overthrowing early. I, I think the bigger problem, Gary, is for huge inning Santana to be sitting so long. I think that's a bigger question. Stiffening up. Yep. Now the two two and Duda fouls back the fastball. Well, there you're met. Home run leaders brought to you by Tom Warner Cable. Due to with his home run today, now has eight, two more than Scott Harrison. Daniel Murphy still looking for his first home run, waiting on deck. 2 2 from Freeman, and due to foul tips it for strike three. So Freeman has his first big league strikeout. He's got a flat slider. Foul tipped it. He's on it. A little reach. So now with the bases loaded and two out, here's Daniel Murphy, who tripled in a run back in the fourth, his first triple of the season. He's also grounded out twice, one for three. Nets have had only six hits tonight, but they made him count. Doesn't wear a jacket in between innings, just wraps that left arm, that valuable left arm, in a towel. All by his lonesome. So the question is, Ronnie, how far will they let him go? Well, the reason is, is they have Bobby Parnell warming up, is that if the decision is made for him, I'm not going to mention what would happen. You guys all know out there, then Parnell would immediately come into the game. Yes. If not, uh, Hardest decision in baseball. Toward the whole base hit for Murphy. Torres is in. Neuenheis heading home. Here comes the throw by Holiday to the plate. It skips to the backstop. Two runs score on the base hit by Murphy, and it's eight to nothing, New York. So Murphy with his second and third RBIs of the night. 22 for the year for Daniel. The wrong guy to be throwing sliders to. Yeah. Wrong guy. And that's just how you hit a slider, and Daniel goes that way so naturally. Well, the, the pitcher throws it because he wants the hitter to try to uh, pull it for a ground ball double play, not Murph. So the book's closed on Wainwright. He gives up seven runs and six hits in six and a third innings. Eight nothing New York, and here's Davis, the eighth man up in the inning. And he breaks his bat and rolls out to third. The barrel of the bat goes into the stands as Freeze throws out Davis to end the inning. But the Mets tack on three, and now the drama rests with Santana as he goes to the mound for the eighth inning. Well, the scoreboard says it all. What it doesn't say, though, is the number of pitches that Johan Santana, who's recovering from shoulder surgery, has thrown tonight. That number is 107. The Mets stated limit for Santana this year is 110, maybe fudging to 115. 
Tyler Green leads off the eighth. First pitch swinging, pops it up. Omar Quintanilla trailing out. In comes Newenice, and oh, Newenice avoids the collision and makes the catch. A little bit of nerves, perhaps, given the situation. Well, this has happened before with Newenice. He's got to call. He's got to yell a little louder. He's got to be more assertive. That's yes. what he's got to be. He's got to take charge. He's the general now. I played behind uh, guys with no hitters and as a fielder Gary right now you are on your toes. I'll take that back. Uh, you couldn't be more assertive than uh, Kirk was there. I think that was Kintania just wanted to make sure that if Neuenheis wasn't there he would make the play yeah. but got a little too close. Now Shane Robinson will be the pinch hitter hitting 243 on the year. One out in the eighth. And a fastball strike. It might have been a veteran shortstop who's had a lot of innings knowing that I'm not going to let this drop in no way no how. Meanwhile Tyler Green really helped out Santana putting that first pitch in play. Well there's Elvin Ramirez who just joined the Mets today and now with an eight run lead. Should the Mets need a relief pitcher why not run Ramirez out there. Change up fouled away. And now it's one and two. And now Santana is at 110, 111. Rafael for call on deck. This is like a runaway train, man. This is almost being taken out of Terry Collins' hands. One, two. Missed up and in. And did it hit him? Apparently so. Or at least Robinson says it did. No indication from the home plate umpire. Mm -hmm. And he says, come on back. Gary Cedarstrom was having none of it, and now Mike Matheny will come out to argue. Right on that dish, Keith. Yes. It got him. It hit him on the hand. Now the question is, and there was no indication from Cedarstrom, did he not see it, or did he rule that Robinson made no effort to get out of the way? Mm. You cannot say that he didn't try yeah. to get out of the way because it's just it got him just off that uh, knuckle on the end of his hand. Of course, like freeze cam. Well, that's the second call that's gone it in favor of the Mets tonight. Has, has it gone in favor of the Mets? Robinson gets another chance to hit. No. Well, we'll see. Two two coming. Strike three call. Seven strikeouts for Santana. Two out of the eighth. How much pressure is on that guy? How do you weigh it? I, I feel like it's a runaway train, Gary. That's what it feels like to me. He's going to go out in the ninth it's, if he gets it's, for Cal. It's bigger than anything here. The chant of Johan from the crowd at City Field. John Main, second to last day of 2007 against the Marlins, broken up by Paul Hoover on an infield hit. Now it's 2 0 to Fercal. Fercal is 0 for 3, he's hit the ball in the air three times. How many deep breaths are you taking in between pitches here, Keith, if you're in that on the field? Carlos Beltran would be next. Santana's retired the last 11. And now it's three and oh he's walked four tonight struck out seven. I guarantee you every fielder out there is on his toes on point. Three and oh to for call and taking all the way a strike. Tough call for, for Santana. Do you pitch to the situation? Yep, yep. Do you pitch to the game? Agreed. There's ball four, and the Cardinals have a two out base runner, the fifth walk given up by Santana. And now Carlos Beltran, who by all odds should have had a hit his last time up, will be coming up. And Terry Collins heads out to the mound, and he's out there to take Johan's temperature. Uh, that did not look good, that last changeup, no. by the way, to Fur Collins. He's going to ask Johan to give him an honest answer, which Johan is not going to give him. Not going to happen. He's not coming out. <laughs> so Santana will get a crack to finish the eighth inning. 
The closest the Cardinals have come to a hit tonight was the foul ball that Beltron hit in the sixth inning. It appeared to hit the chalk along the left field line behind third base, but it was ruled a foul ball, and then Beltron grounds it out. And Carlos takes a strike. Mm. Well, he's never thrown more than 125. That was in that wonderful second to last day start in 08. And Beltron badly fooled. Nothing in two. Santana tonight. And Beltron flares one. Quintanilla in. And Murphy picked it off in front of him to end the inning. Santana the first met since Seaver to take a no-hit bid to the ninth inning. MLB at Home is presented by Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief. Works fast and you won't stink. The official pain relief cream of Major League Baseball. Johan Santana by himself at the end of the Mets dugout. Eight no-hit innings under his belt. 122 pitches. And apparently is going to have an opportunity to go out there for the ninth inning. The first Met pitcher since Tom Seaver, who did it three times, to take a no-hitter into the ninth inning. Meanwhile, Michael Clayto comes in to pitch the bottom of the eighth for St. Louis. And Josh Tolley takes a strike. Tolley's 0 for 3 tonight in his return to action. What a way to come off the disabled list. <laughs> Forget about the hitting. You're right. He's caught eight no hit innings. What must be going through Tolley's mind? I've never ever uh, wanted to see one two three for the Mets when they're on offense but might, this might be the first time. Clayto pitched in three games for the Cardinals last year as that one fouled off and it's one and two. You've got the rest of the team and then in a separate section of the dugout. Senor Santana. He's never allowed fewer than three hits in a complete game in his career. Fouls one off the mask. Well, today is the 8,020th game in Mets history. They've had 35 one hitters. They've had a lot of pitchers throw them before or after, and they've had three instances where a pitcher's taken a no hit bid into the ninth, all by one man, Tom Seaver, before tonight. Totally goes down on strikes. And the toss by Molina for the first out. Well, there have been a couple of instances tonight where the Cardinals might have had a hit. This was the first one in the sixth inning. Carlos Beltran, it's a seed down the line. Adrian Johnson calls it a foul ball, but a replay clearly shows the ball hit the line and should have been ruled a fair ball base hit. And then there was the catch by Mike Baxter on which he injured himself. That came in the seventh inning against Yadier Molina, crashing into the fence in left field and hanging on to the ball. Those are the closest that the Cardinals have come to a hit tonight. Quintanilla takes a strike. Omar Quintanilla has a base hit tonight. Santana out on deck to take his turn. And just to make it more interesting the Cardinals will have the heart of their batting order coming up in the ninth inning Matt Holiday Alan Craig David Freeze.
Two balls and a strike to Cantania. I'll tell you in some ways Santana being on deck has got to be a welcome relief not sitting in that dugout just grinding. Got to think about something else than that inning right taking in that bat. I agree getting ready. The bullpen's quiet. It'll be active though once Santana takes them out. Two and two to Quintanilla. Yeah. Now this was in the seventh inning. Yadier Molina making a bid for an extra base hit. Three one count fell behind. What a play by Baxter. And I, looks like he came out of this game with a shoulder injury of some sort. We're not sure. But that is one of the two plays that we just showed you that have made the difference so far in this. You know what we're, 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 we're observing. <laughs> well, you know, some would argue that the call that Adrian Johnson got wrong is an argument for more instant replay, yeah. which has been the subject of a lot of discussion. You know, just as Armando Galarraga did not get a perfect game because of an umpire's call, you know, no hitters can be formed around umpire's calls as well. And whether that's right or wrong is a subject of quite a bit of debate. Can't be held by Molina. Still two and two to Quintanilla. Just as an aside here, I don't think anybody really cares. This kid throws pretty hard. <laughs> we'll talk about him tomorrow. <laughs> we'll let him know you mentioned. <laughs> And now full count to Quintanilla. I think Santana is going to get a bigger ovation this time when he comes to yeah, bat I think so. than he did in, in the seventh. I agree. They just gave him a bigger applause when he got the sack in, that, in the seventh. Sacrifice bunt. Now the three-two, and Quintanilla pops it up. Who's going to get it right at the corner oh. and Holiday running out of room. Someone's going to get a little talking to. Well he can f field but uh, he knows not his place. Stool removal problem. Yep. Oh. He's not going to raise his head. <laughs> a lot tougher down there than people think. I'll tell you that. Yes. Well you run out of room in a hurry. There's no place to go. You got three fielders converging on you in that corner right near the stands. No, nope. it's a lonely place. Leave it to Al and camera two to put him on, put the spotlight on him. <laughs> Quintanilla hits a rocket down the line, and that's a base hit. It caroms out to Craig, so Quintanilla will have to stop it first. But a bullet by Omar Quintanilla for his second hit of the night, and now Santana will come to bat. Johan 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt tonight. And he takes a strike. Preliminary word on Mike Baxter left shoulder contusion, undergoing more testing now. Strike to Santana. Andres Torres waiting. The Mets eight runs, eight hits. The Cardinals no runs, no hits. They're not bothering with the bunt with an eight nothing lead. Santana has no interest in swinging the bat, has no interest in really getting on base. We'd love to take a couple more strikes and go sit down. There's one.
2 2. And now it's a full count to Santana. <laughs> he might have to run the bases. Looks like his thumb laid up, trying to make it out. Now the 3 2 from Plato. And that's right down the middle for strike three. So Santana takes his strike out. That shows where his focus is. Intelligent at that. Now he can go ponder for a moment what awaits him when he takes the mound for the top of the night. Matt Holiday, front of mind. Here's Torres up for the second time. Walked and scored in the seventh. Down to first, and Adams makes the play to end the inning. So the Mets are done in the bottom of the eighth. And now Santana will prepare himself for the ninth, and we will keep it right here as Johan Santana prepares to go where no Met has gone before. Excuse me, are, are you Johnny Bench? Yes. Would you mind signing this? Sure. And this, and this, and this, and this. Blue Emu, official partner of Major League Baseball. Well, I feel the, pit, uh, the pitcher that Santana is, he's going to reach back for something extra here. And, and, and you're going to have to beat him. Elvin Ramirez just called up today. will stay busy in the bullpen. But Santana, it would appear, is going to be allowed to stay around as long as it takes. Nothing against Alvin Ramirez. I would love if he doesn't make his major league debut tonight. It's always tomorrow. The Cardinals have not been no hit in 22 years since Fernando Valenzuela threw one against them in 1990. The Mets, who were in their 51st season, have never had a pitcher seal the deal. Three times Tom Seaver took no hitters into the night. The most famous one, his first in 1969, when he had his perfect game broken up with one out of the ninth at Shea Stadium by Jimmy Qualls. He also went eight in the third against the Padres in 72. Leron Lee broke that up, and he took a no hitter two outs into the ninth in a scoreless game at Wrigley Field. And Joe Wallace broke it up in 1975. And now, 37 years later, Johan Santana takes the mound for the ninth inning with a no hit bid intact. The last time I felt like this as a man, I used to put stirrups on. Matt Holiday leads off. Line drive, center field. On comes Torres, and he gets there. One out. One pitch, one out of the ninth. I have friends here today who came, it's their first game ever. Well, this happens every day, Jeez. guys. Alan Craig is 0 for 3. <laughs> 33 years old, two-time two Cy Young Award winner. But now trying to add an indelible, an indelible piece to his resume. Great changeup. One and one. They all know the history. What pitch to throw? If you're in any other inning, you pop an inside fastball to keep them loose. Do you do it here?
Left field, Neuenheis coming on. Two out. Probably asking yourself, why are the Mets players not on the top step of the dugout? That's because they're where they've been all game long. No sense moving now. David Fries, the last man in Santana's way. Skipping away from Tolley, ball one. Almost two near bloopers to start this inning. He's about to throw his 130th pitch, five more than he's ever thrown in a major league game. And now it's 2 0 to freeze. Johan has walked five tonight, he's struck out seven. Bet the house on a 2 0 change, don't you, Keith? Ball three. Yadier Molina, who has broken Mets hearts before, would be next. Do you give a 3 0 hit sign? I think so. And Freeze takes it for a strike. Three and one. That'll let him hit. Hitter have anxiety here? <laughs> Low ground ball foul. That was shades of Paul Hoover right there. And now he's one strike away. tonight against the St. Louis Cardinals. In his 99th start for the New York Mets, his 43rd win, it's no hit history. And let's make one point, he did it against the National League's number one hitting team, leading in home runs, batting average, runs, the top offensive club in the National League. World champions! Best pitch he had all night long. No 
chance for threes. Well, Terry Collins let him go. His pitch count was supposed to stop at 110. He stretched it tonight to 134. Josh Tolley coming off the disabled list caught him, and Santana did the rest. A great catch by Mike Baxter that cost him a shoulder injury. One missed call by an umpire that helped his cause. And Johan Santana does something that many of us who've watched Mets baseball over the last 50 plus seasons thought might never happen. The first no hitter by a New York Met pitcher. And I asked you the question, Gare, did you ever think it would happen? No. But now it has.